There we go. Welcome, everybody, to this week's Writer's Chat. We're glad you joined us today. This is the place we like to gather every week at Tuesday at 11 o'clock Eastern to talk about all things writing for writers and by writers. I think that kind of makes us realistic on that way. And I'm joined this week by my co-host, Bethany Jett. We'll have her way there, Bethany. And we have one of our own today as our special guest. It's Melissa. And we're going to talk today about all things about Pinterest for writers and um, Melissa's gathered some information for us and like I said a few minutes before we started recording what we'll do uh, later for those of you that are here with us live is we'll have you kind of come back in and maybe we could share some ideas how all of us have used right as as writers have used Pinterest and we've got some screen shares to show you today and we're gonna talk about all, all about Pinterest today so I'm looking forward to our conversation and we want to thank Melissa for being with us. Melissa's a newer to maybe some of our viewers here. And uh, we thank you. Melissa, why don't you take just a little bit and tell us a little bit about, about yourself. Since we, uh, some people that w watch this or watch our replay, we've got a whole crew of people that like to watch our replay, may not know you well. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself to start? Well, thank you first for having me on. This is a real honor to be able to get on here and talk with you guys about Pinterest. Uh, I love Pinterest, so this is a fun topic for me. Um, I'm a, a writer, and I uh, my love is historical fiction, so I'm aspiring to get published in historical fiction. And of course, you know, I'm, I'm new to the uh, Writer's Chat and Serious Writer team, and recently become the um, Director of Communications there, and help out behind the scenes work, and also helping out um, as director of the Serious Writer Book Club, and I'm loving that too. So this is great to be here. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the book club, Serious Writer Book Club? Is that re launched or is it just, it's launched, ready to go? Can either you or Bethany tell us a little bit about that? Bethany might be a better one for that one right now. <laughs> um, well, with, with Serious Writer, we're, we focus a lot on writers, but writers are also readers and a lot of readers like to write. So we have a serious writer book club and the goal is to read more books this year than you did last year. So it's nice. that way it's just kind of open to everybody. Um, but what we hope to happen is um, as the group grows and people start to, you know, figure out, Oh, I love this genre. And we start getting these subgroups that will start getting different conversations in there, you know, around that. And then we have a Goodreads discussion um, private group, that I'm sending out in an email this week um, for anyone who wants to be part of that. Make sure you jump on our newsletter. And then, okay, that sounds that is sounds super. How does people find more um, information about that? Is there um, a link that you could put in the chat? Here. Mm -hmm. And then you can just Google and not Google, but Facebook search um, Serious Writer Book Club, and it should pop up. It's on Facebook. Okay, mm -hmm. so if they put in the search engine on Facebook, Serious Writer Book Club. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll be able to find it. Okay, that sounds great. That sounds great because like you said, writers are readers, but writers are also interested in Pinterest. So we asked Melissa to share with us some of her expertise and I'm going to start at 101 on this, Melissa. Just what is Pinterest? You mm -hmm. know, I know last year on Writers Chat, we talked a great deal about Instagram, but we did not talk about Pinterest. So can you tell us a little bit about what Pinterest is? And give us some background about it. Yeah, well, most people have the, the perception that Pinterest is a social media platform. And it's what it kind of started out as, but it's not that anymore. It's not a social media platform. It's really a search and discovery network. Oh. People go to Pinterest to try to discover and to curate ideas. And, um, you know, it, they want they want actionable ideas. They want stuff that they can implement in their own lives. And so you, they go there and they, they um, you know, get those innovative ideas out there. And a Pinterest function is kind of like just a digital corkboard. You know, they have what we call um, pins. It's a multimedia that you go and pin. You have a picture and your URL of a specific topic that you're looking into. And you can pin those onto digital boards that you create and categorize um, for your own personal reference and inspiration. So um, yeah, there, uh, again, um, Pinterest also does things by topic and you can search things um, according to those, those topics, those categories. Um, say you're interested in, well, for us, it'd be like writing, you know, maybe yeah. you're 
interested in marketing your book. So you can type marketing or book marketing in the, the search engine for Pinterest and every pin that they've got on marketing for books is just going to pop right up there. You, you'll probably be overwhelmed with because there's so much on writing on Pinterest and you can pin the things that really appeal to you and categorize them and have them there for reference later on. And you and, know, we're such a visual people yes. anymore. And yes. I, so I think that's one reason why I, I, I read one place that somebody calls it uh, Google with pictures. That yes. Google with pictures that, you know, you could find the pictures that you like and you could go there. Yes. And I just, I thought that was such a neat image, Google for pictures. You know, I feel like I'm back in kindergarten again sometimes when I play with Pinterest, but it's fun too, isn't it? It's addictive and you got to be careful to get down that rabbit hole of search. You find all these categories where you're just like, ooh, I like this, I like that. You're clicking on things and next thing you know, you've spent like an hour on Pinterest. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And, you know, that's something we probably could, could say because I think some, probably some writers, uh, some of the people watching this either like live or a replay start probably about the second thought we get whenever we start talking about any of this is how can I do all this? You know, how can I do it? And I know I looked in, in prep, prep for today. I looked at my stats on uh, Google just last week uh, for my blog and Pinterest is my second place for referral. Facebook's my first, well, uh, organic's my first. The second is Facebook. The third is Pinterest. It's 15% of all my traffic I get for Pinterest. So I think sometimes you got to know where your audience is too, don't you? You do, you do. And, um, you know, Pinterest is so good about driving that traffic there because it, it's functioned like a search engine. Mm -hmm. I, every pin that's on there has um, the dynamic image that draws you in and there's a URL so you can see where it comes from and you know what site it's supposed to take you to for a little more information so when you pin that it takes you to the website and you know if you're pinning your content on there every time somebody clicks on that pin bam right to your site and it's driving it up and like Jane Friedman said you mentioned her before um, Pinterest users will use Pinterest oftentimes before they even go to Google so if there's something they want to look up they'll get on Pinterest and type it in and look it in and um, find it there first and because they think that, Pinterest actually, you know, pins from Pinterest actually show up on Google. And so when people go into Google searches, they can find those pins too. And then that's two places driving traffic to your website. And then when Google sees that and people go into your site, it actually drives your Google rating up through Pinterest. That's yeah. so true because I know like for recipes or like mm -hmm. crafty kind of stuff and then memes especially memes i always go to pinterest before i go to google like there it's almost like which it's like which direction do i want to go okay pinterest has like certain areas and then google has certain areas now so it's it's such a smart way to think about it yeah. and stuff yeah i i like i said i go there frequently i do both i think i think you're right it's kind of like what information are you after and there's certain ones you think more i think for a while people thought women were the only ones using pinterest but i'm finding a great deal of i'm seeing yeah. men on there too and they even talked about that in different websites that there's been a growth even recently in, in men male users uh, yeah it's becoming increasingly popular well how does pinterest help the writer though let's let's focus on the writers here How what do you see that well, like we mentioned before, all, all social media and sites like this, platforms like this, are meant to drive traffic to your site. So um, that's a big focus, but um, it's a little different on Pinterest as opposed to platforms like, you know, Facebook and Twitter. Um, those platforms send traffic in real quick spurts, and you have to be really frequent about using them and steady. But in Pinterest, uh, um, it offers a steady air traffic because it has the potential to draw people even months after you post. Wow. Searching on Pinterest. And so they'll find stuff way after the fact and they're drawn in even later. So you get to be um, a lot more uh, leisurely about the time you spend on Pinterest. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I love that. Like they say, um, Pinterest is for introverts. In fact, Pinterest is often known as the introverts platform. Really? So, yeah, that is a, a cool title. It's a cool thing. And it's just because of that. I mean, you don't, 
you don't have to be as visual, you don't have to be as on it. You can, you can spend more time um, putting up quality content. And that's the big drive with Pinterest is that um, it's not fo focused on the numbers. It's about um, the relevant content that you post onto it and that you create to drive that traffic to your platform. Bethany, share what you called it just a minute ago in the chat. I think that's neat. I said, <laughs> I called it Pinterest. <laughs> Pinterest. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Pinterest. <laughs> yeah, you do like your, uh, you see, Rebecca says you do like your pin, uh, your personality tests. Love, it's, love, love, love. <laughs> we I'm, want to do them. <laughs> I'm glad you're monitoring the chat room because uh, people are already starting to share some um, ideas about how writers can use Pinterest. And I'm just curious, let's, let's share some ideas. I know you did some research on this, Melissa. What can yes. you share? And then maybe we'll look in the, in the chat a little bit and pull in some of their ideas. Yes, that definitely. Um, well, some of the biggest, well, one of the most obvious things that you can use your um, Pinterest account for is your writing. Your books. You can use it to, uh, to link to um, your books. If you're selling a book on Amazon or whatever, you can pin from there. You can um, link to your blog and your website. If you have any other um, sites where you're writing, maybe you're guest writing or guest posting somewhere, you can link to that in, in Pinterest and put it on one of your pin boards. Um, uh, writers like to use it for their own research and for their own creative um, processes. So you could create boards dedicated to like a fiction writer, to your characters. Mm -hmm. to to things that have inspired your characters or your writing. Um, for nonfiction writers, absolutely essential that you have boards geared towards your topic that you write about mm -hmm. because people want to see that you, you are knowledgeable in your field. And so there are so many ways that writers can implement Pinterest to help them. Yeah, you remember, I, I, I think you may have watched the replay, and Bethany will have you jump on and correct me on this. It seemed like last year when we talked about Instagram. Jill talked to us about having, I want to call them buckets. I don't think she called them buckets. Certain like five or six, seven areas that she, you look at and concentrate on. What did she call those, Bethany? She calls them content six. Content six. So mm -hmm. there were six of them. And so I've noticed that in Pinterest too, some, especially like nonfiction writers or certain brands will have certain content buckets or whatever on that. Have you noticed that too, Melissa? Yeah, definitely. And it all depends on the writer. You know, you do notice it like certain nonfiction ones. They're just certain elements they try to get in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I read the other day that periodically we need to go in and clean up our boards, you know, and kind of rearrange them and, and, um, and some may not, you may be done with that project. So you may want to, you know, move that board. You know, I think it's a continual process. You're constantly kind of rearranging it. And we're going to talk about that a little more later too, how to really make your Pinterest board dynamic for your viewers and how to clean it up. Okay. 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 So what, what else can, how can writers make this, this best work for them? What are some of the tricks that you could talk to us about? Okay. Well, the, the biggest thing um, that you want to do first off uh, is to get a business account on Pinterest. And you don't have to worry about that. That's, that's not as intimidating as it sounds because both the business account and your personal accounts are free and they look virtually the same. The only difference between a business account and your personal account is that your business account provides free analytics. So they can tell you how your pins are functioning and how many you know, hits, if you will, you're getting or how many pins you're getting with certain things you put up on your board. And it also comes with different business tools that you can embed in your boards and right on your blog posts and even in like the sidebar of your own website. Wow. So there's a lot of neat aspects to the business account. If I remember right, it was a pretty easy process when I moved my board to a business board. I think I, all I had to do is just click something or ask. The Pinterest walks you right through it. It, it has a, like a tutorial and it's got all the little forms that you fill out. It is so easy. It's not at all technical whatsoever. And I am not a technical person. The tech aspect of things is intimidating to me. So if I can do it, anybody else can do it. <laughs> That's encouraging. 
that's yeah. encouraging on that. Bethany's commented about her boards that she has a lot of boards and she leaves some fun ones out there. Bethany, you're one of them I have up to show in just a, a few minutes. Uh, we'll, we'll screen share a little bit in a little bit and I'll show your board because your board is very, I think very impressive because she keeps it she's branded. It's branded and it show, uh, to me it just, as soon as I clicked on hers, I said, well, we gotta show Bethany's because her your branding is so well done Thanks. on that. So, so we'll, well, we'll show that in a minute. <laughs> yeah, one of the big things, and you will notice that it, Bethany does a great job of it. Um, when you're creating your profiles on there, after you've established your business um, account, um, you want to make sure that your profile description that you have under and up top, they'll have your picture. You want to have a nice big image for your picture that conveys you your brand. And then you have a nice dynamic description that uses keywords. Keywords are so important on Pinterest because, like we said, Pinterest functions like a search engine. So if you've got keywords in your description of who you are, what you do, then people can find you really fast. And um, also, you want to put a little bit of personality in those descriptions too. So people, you know, get a, a sense of, of you, who you are, and, and that, mm -hmm. like that personal touch. Um, also, we, we get into that a topic about making things look good. We want to um, create what we call themed boards. And it's, mm -hmm. it's just like we've talked about before. A themed board is just the boards that focus on you, on your writing, on, on what you represent to your, your fan base, your tribe. And so um, you create those themed boards and you get them up front and center where everybody can see them. Because Pinterest is so um, versatile and allows you to do so much, you can um, choose your um, titles, you can title them, you can put captions in to explain the boards when people get on the board, and you can um, choose your um, feature image that shows up on each board. So you can pick a really dynamic image from all of your pins so that it stands out. I didn't know you could pick one image as a feature image on your board. Is that like in the settings or? Well, you can click right on the board. There's a little, you know, hidden mm -hmm. icon. Edit yep. icon. You click on that edit icon and then you go down, you'll see something that says change your cover. You click on that and then it will let you scroll through all of your prominent images that you have on that board. Really? You can even kind of arrange it a little bit so it's centered the way you want. And I'll have that. to do that. That is that's kind of, kind of like when you pin a Facebook post to the top of the thing. So there's a way to click that and do that. Yeah, there's a lot. Stuff. Yeah, on that. That sounds really neat. I didn't, I, I, well, see, there you go. I've learned something already. On, and on the idea of theme boards, I think what we call them is important too, isn't it? Because you, if, if you're thinking search engine, you don't want to call it my food because nobody's ever going to put my food in the search bar. They're going to put crock pot chicken recipes. So that's yeah. what you want to call your board. Exactly. You want to be specific for your keyword, what you call your theme boards, correct? Yes, you do. You want to make it easy to find. So, you know, if you're an author, you, your name's out there. I have a board that just has my name on it, MN Stroke, and it has all of my blog posts, things that I've written, articles. Okay. So and I have mine is, is my theme for my blog. I call it healthy spirituality, but I never thought about making one as actual my name so on that way so that that is really that is really cool on that yeah. um, i recently created a writer's chat board too so that you can go onto that board and see the writer's chat so we have a writer's chat board yeah well on my site you do <laughs> Ooh, oh there's a thought I, ooh, that's a very good thought i hadn't thought about that that is good mm -hmm. so it's important what you name your board so people can find them very much Right, and these board descriptions can help hold keywords too, correct? Yes, you can. And um, too, a little side note there, it, it don't feel like you have to be slavishly devoted to those themed boards because like we said, personality is important on Pinterest too. So mm -hmm. it's okay to have a little bit of um, you know, creative boards or just fun boards on there too. If you feel they relate to who you are and, and uh, giving your, your tribe, your followers a little insight into who you are, Put them up there, like uh, like Bodhi Taney. She's one of my all-time favorite authors. Yeah. Love her. And um, on her Pinterest board, she has one devoted to John Wayne and one devoted to Disney. And if anybody knows oh. anything about Bodhi Taney, you know she adores those subjects. And so it adds a personal touch. People love that. 
and that, but and I think you were going to mention this later, but this is, might be a good place to mention it is that you can keep secret boards too, can't you? That boards that you want to keep as a reference for yourself, but other people don't see that. So there must be a way in settings to make them secret. There is, and that's that's actually a good time to talk about that right now. I think we could discuss yeah. that. The secret boards, um, they've actually come a long way with that. When they first created secret boards, you had to create a board as a secret board first, and then you couldn't put it back out there because if you made it a public board, it could no longer be secret. And secret pinnable content can no longer be pinned on your public content either. So there was a lot of limitations, and I think they probably decided to change that after people you know, had issues with it. And so now you can switch back and forth between secret and public boards. So you can choose what you want up there and what you want to hide. So if you have boards on there that are personal, you like them, you like the information mm -hmm. on there, but it doesn't jive with your overall theme, you can switch it to a secret board in the same place you go to change your cover. You just click on that little edit icon on your board, okay. and then um, it will have the option to click a button that just switches it to secret, and it pops it down there, and it's hidden. So only you can see it from your um, profile page. And wow. The boards that you put up there. And you can click and drag boards so you can arrange them in the order that you want to. I just recently, and we'll... we'll I think one of my, my boards will pop it up. I have a board on Lent and we're coming up to the season of Lent. And I just recently dragged that up to the top because I figured that's what somebody's searching for. So I dragged that up that way. I like the point uh, Sophia's uh, made over in the chat room that secret boards are nice when you're in the construction mode. Yes. You know, you could be building ideas for a character or for a setting or for a topic, anything you you know that you're researching, and okay. put that there, and then when you're ready to make them more public, bring them up, up, you know, for promotional or marketing purposes. Yeah, that's another thing that I talked about too. You know, say you're writing and you have a book that's about to be published, you can use Pinterest as part of your market strategy and reveal the board devoted to that book on the day you launch. Yeah. And, you know, there's all sorts of fun things you can do. With yeah. Print. Well, that, that's not, I, I had never, I never thought about doing that as, as like kind of works in progress. I think that's a great suggestion from both you guys on all this on that. Rebecca's saying that this makes Pinterest a little less intimidating. <laughs> on, on, on that. <laughs> but you know, I'll go back to, and we have said this before on any of these tools. Um, do what you need to do one step at a time. Don't let it be as overwhelming. And uh, I just started last year being a little bit more active on Pinterest. And my I, my goal is, is just to take it up one step this year and then get a little bit more on Instagram this year. That's kind of my visual goal as a writer this year. And it's only going to be little baby steps. Bethany, I know with you working on this stuff on your master's and stuff, haven't you talked about that in some of your classes about slowly moving into social marketing they they kind of don't so like they're a little bit more like over like broad with all of the social stuff okay. so they're like just jump in like they don't actually give the same advice we do like start with one they're like no you need to be on all of them and this is what you do like oh, no. it's just very much like get to it and start doing it yeah. so wow <laughs> A little bit more intimidating that way, I think, yeah. <laughs> on that. Yeah. What's, what's realistic? Okay, well, what, how else can writers make Pinterest work for them? Well, and, and just before I say that, a little side note that I actually was on Pinterest and Facebook before I started using them as an advertising deal. So I've had a few years on them, and you'll get comfortable the more time you spend on it. So it was a process for me, and it took some time and yeah, just don't stress yourself with those things. One bit at a time is good. I One like bit it. at a time. I think that's good advice. So then um, let's see, where are we at? Oh, you want to make sure that your site is verified or connected with Pinterest. And again, that happens when you sign on with a business account. They walk you through that. It'll help you to connect your website to Pinterest so that you can pin from both. And when you do that, you also want to install pin it buttons on your website and on your pictures. And again, it walks you right through all that stuff too. It's really easy. It's not as technical as it sounds to install pin it buttons on your website and on your images in your posts in your website. And what that does is if you have pinnable content on your website, your images are pinnable, then that increases the chances 
that people are going to actually pin those images from your site and your URL, your website is going to be up on all those pins, bringing more traffic to you. I find Pinterest being very user friendly as far as that and or being able to find information on how to do things. People have, uh, people are willing to share on, on different steps on stuff. And I remember last year thinking, reading about that I needed to verify my site, needed to verify my site. And I thought, oh no, I hate that back end stuff and going into Pinterest. And I thought, I already did this. I already had my site. But when did I do that? I didn't even remember doing it. But it was so simple. I just a matter of a couple clicks and I had it done. So uh, that it's it's that it was less intimidating to to walk through. So some of this advice, if you've not done some of this, you can go in and do it in an afternoon. Spend an afternoon working on some Pinterest stuff, and you can take it up to the next level. Yeah, it really doesn't take that much time at all. A lot of those things I was able to do you know, in a few minutes. So Good. It's really easy. Good. Well, you know, one thing and then I asked you to share a little about, about this, and it's a term I keep hearing about, and it's called rich pins. And I that thing confused me. I'll get out what a rich pin is. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? And I'm going to pull up a link to an article on that real quick here and put that in the chat. Yeah, rich pins are basically pins that have your branding and your blog name right on them. They have a little, you'll notice them on Pinterest if you're a user. You see that they have the more dynamic pictures with that white border down underneath that has the blog name, big bold font. It usually has like a comment or something like that that mm -hmm. that you in the keywords so you know what it is and that um, the URL, the, the website is right up there. So you see it and you know exactly where it's from. You don't have to sit there and look after you pull up that picture and try to see, okay, well, who pinned this? Yeah. So that you tell that it's from a legit site. Um, the, yeah, like it just assures people that that. And, um, and why, uh, would, why would a writer want to use a rich pin? Because it, it actually does draw um, more people because of that trustworthy nature. Okay. Pinterest, like any other platform has the people who abuse it. And they'll link, um, you know, some pretty questionable stuff in there. And sometimes you accidentally click on something you don't want to click on, and it'll take you to one of those sites you didn't want to be on that could, you know, add potential malware, things like that on you. So those rich pins are kind of an assurance. People see that and they're like, oh, I know that this is okay because somebody put the time to connect it to their website. And so I know that these pins are legit. It, and, and we talked about um, the pin, or sorry. Uh, the the link that you have for the tutorials to put that up there yep. is a little more involvement to get a rich pin on your site but um, Pinterest does have um, some tutorial on that and then there are a lot of great um, sites out there that walk you through it there's one the link I think that we have actually has um, images that walk you through to show you how to do it because you're going to want to get metadata on your website and um, that is yeah scary so sort the of word but it, it, it involves plugins and, and, and if you have a WordPress site, that's not a problem at all because um, I believe it's Yoast. Yoast. Is the one that you use. Mm -hmm. And Yoast yeah. is a free plugin that goes with WordPress. And so if, if you have it, you already have metadata on your site. And, and then, this, this article by Melissa Griffin. Melissa Griffin is a good resource yeah. on stuff. She offers some different classes. And it's just really good. She's, she's a good, reliable person to check out. It's pretty up-to-date on um uh, Pinterest, but this article in particular that we put in the chat talks about using that Yoast plugin, which many of us do have on our w WordPress sites, and how that helps you connect them. So it, it's a pretty easy tutorial. Yeah, and they do. They walk you through it step by step. It's, it's not too um, you know, hard, but there is one caveat that I have to mention. Um, if for WordPress users, I can't speak for other sites, but I am a WordPress user too. You have to be upgraded to the business plan of WordPress in order to put plugins on your site. So if you have a free site or the bare bones like I've got, you can't use rich pins because you can't put plugins on. And you still have good pinnable content regardless. So that's not, you know, not a real big idea or big deal, but you, you won't be able to install rich pins until you upgrade. I know, Bethany, you're monitoring the chat. Seems like there's a little bit of talk about emails, about having a personal page and a business page. Um, I think what she was saying is 
Um, it's like with most accounts, like you can only have one email associated with it. It's like Instagram too. Like I have multiple Instagram accounts, but I have to use different emails for all of them. Okay. So if you're, I think the advice that's going on in the chat is if you, if you're sure you want to manage two Pinterest profiles, then having a second email is worth it to open the second okay. one. Okay. And what was your comment, Bethany, about categorizing? You can categorize within a board. Did I see yeah. something about that? Yeah, I've not played with it. I mean, I've, I've seen that um, it can happen. So, I mean, Melissa probably knows a lot more about this than I do. I just know that like, I'm excited about it because with the holidays, I'd like to have like one holiday board, but then be able to subcategorize inside of there the oh. different holidays or like a social media board and be able to put like a Twitter category up. Uh, Facebook category. So it's something that I saw on mine and I, I want to play with. Ooh. I saw that on there, but I haven't played with it yet either. I think that's a fairly new feature on Pinterest that you can categorize within the board. And so that, yeah, that's something I haven't played with yet. Yeah, so. but holiday and social media are two wonderful examples of that too. And that, so they probably would be more featured more when you categorize them on, on that way. People that. have been asking for it for a long time. I mean, I remember a few years ago, like people talking about, please let us have sub boards so we don't have to have all these different boards within the same topic. So I'm glad they did, they're doing it. Um, Melissa, someone said, what is your social media username? Yeah, I just noticed that. So I am looking, I'm gonna get that and put that up there. I'm assuming they want it for Pinterest. Is that what they Yes, want? yes, I believe so. And Insta. <laughs> and what? <laughs> Instagram. I do not have Instagram. So I'm sorry, there's just, no... Just a lot of her chair. <laughs> <laughs> when we, when uh, Melissa and I were talking about today, I said, you need to go back and listen to Jill's. I gave her the link to Jill's presentation last year on Instagram. I said, they'll get you excited about Instagram. And I said, because I think you, you can use both of them to your benefit as a writer. I mean, Bethany, you're an example of using both. But you can you share just a minute why you use both? Yeah, I think they're different. They're definitely different platforms. Um, I remember one time Jill and I were going back and forth on our bios and, and my mom and I thought, oh, this is the perfect bio. So I put it on Instagram and then I put it on Pinterest, but it didn't work on Pinterest, even though they're both visual and they're both supposed to be like a magazine. The, the bios can't be the same. Even the platforms are that different with how the audience views it. So I like Melissa said it the best way I have ever heard it is that Pinterest is a search engine because that's how you use it. It's how your people use it. So if you pin thinking that way, that's what really gives you like good results in analytics, it's like good analytics on that. Yeah. And I listened to a, uh, a workshop just the other day and they talked, you know, Melissa's mentioned the importance of keywords in our descriptions and our overall descriptions on our board descriptions and in our pin descriptions. And what surprised me is that I don't have many on specific pins. I've just got a little bit that one that she says sometimes she's used as much as 20 key words within her pin descriptions. So that when somebody pops up, like, well, let's just use a uh, uh, crock pot chicken recipes. She uses crock pot, crock pot recipes, chicken recipes, uh, whatever the specific kind of recipes name, you know, she uses whatever and she puts those all in that description just for the search engine capability of finding it. It was, I was, I just was, was amazing. And that's very practical too, because you never know what people are going to type in when they're trying to find it, you know, yeah. so if you have several options in there that bring it up, all the better. And Pinterest is, has what they call a smart feed. And you're familiar with smart feeds, even if you aren't. Smart feed is like what Google does. You know how when you go to Google and you type in social media you get all those little choices, what they think is what you might be looking for, social media for writers, social media, Facebook. So, you know, they give you some choices that you can pull down uh, and, and link to like a, a, a windows that pull down. Pinterest works the same way. So if you put crock pot recipes, it's going to pull up chicken, pork, beef, whatever, you know, or, or quick and easy or five steps, five ingredients. It'll pick up whatever's kind of trending on there. So you could smart feed, figure out something. So you can, you can find what some of those keywords that might work for historical fiction, you know. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. So it's just, a, it's just amazing. You talk a little bit about what good, images work best on yes. Pinterest. 
Um, the biggest thing with Pinterest is large vertical images. That's always been the most popular kind of image on Pinterest, but they are now starting to move to square images too. It's a, it's a new movement in Pinterest. Really? Vertical and square images are best when you're, if, if you're thinking like images that you're putting on say a blog post and you want that image to be pinnable and stand out, that, that's what you go for. And I, I know with a lot of websites that can be difficult because a lot of websites have horizontal images and horizontal images will get cut off in part on Pinterest because it's, it's set up more for vertical and square. So uh, yeah, definitely make sure that you have really large vertical or square images and bold fonts too, like, you know, like memes, you mentioned those before that yeah. stand out or some people like to, you know, they create their, their um, main image and then they'll put the, the title of their topic, their blog or whatever, right there over the image. And so if you have a big dynamic um, font right up there, that also stands out. And so, yeah, big dynamic fonts, big vertical and square images. And yeah, that, that's, that's the main thing. That's, that's the big thing. And I think uh, I'm, one of the goals I have this year is to work on the photography. And I'm going to try to do more of my own and clear. And I'm thinking as I'm taking these pictures, I'm thinking of Pinterest posts. I'm thinking of uh, memes for my blog, you know. And so it's like I'm starting to see things as just like what you said on, said on that on visual and stuff. Uh, Bethany, do you want to jump in and say you, you about the link that you've just created? What did you create for us? Yes. All right. So I put the link to the Facebook group, the series writer Facebook group. And then I just, there's not a graphic with it, but I just threw in, um, I said, please share your Pinterest and Instagram links, not the handle, the actual link so people can click on it to follow. And then I put my two as an example in the comments. So, um, if you guys want to put your handles and links in the chat, feel free, but please put them in the Facebook group too, so we can start um, so we can, following each other. Yeah. You're right. And Rachel brought up, and it's something we have talked about before, but I think it's important to emphasize is how good Canva is for it's choosing the sizes for, uh, a, especially they have, like, like you said, just a, a Pinterest image and you just click right on that. And I know Bethany, you use Canva quite a bit. Yeah, I love Canva. It makes me feel like I can uh, make halfway decent graphics. <laughs> it's so easy. I'm going to do one right now and throw it over in that Facebook group for that thing. I mean, it's so simple. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, and I agree with uh, a, a couple of them in the thing that we love Canva. <laughs> it really made life a lot easier, I think, yeah. on, on, on that. Anything else on image sizes or, or tips that we skipped over? Well, there is something we forgot to mention, um, too, uh, is promoted pins. You know, yeah, we'll talk, about, talk about that. Address promoted pins, and they're, they're very similar. It's just um, the promoted pins are what you pay for to get your image up. So they're, not everybody likes to use them, but promoted pins also have some of their benefits. Like, you'll notice if you're on Pinterest, especially you mentioned, like, crockpot recipes and, and recipes like that. Promoted pins are the ones you see that'll actually have the recipe listed underneath the picture before oh. you get up there. So sometimes it has that relevant information right up front underneath in, in a bolder font that you know stands out from the, the regular captions you see on just average pins. So um, there are some benefits. They do draw a little more as far as the ratings and, and stuff and the traffic it drives. But again, that um, promoted pins are, are something you actually have to invest. So book marketing might that might be the time. I've not even looked into that for the expense or on on that, but it might be a marketing technique for a writer to consider to promote something specifically on their book or their character, especially if something they think would attract. You know, you have the crock pot killer series, and you want to bring someone to that. The secret ingredient board or whatever i'm just making all that up of course it's it's it you know i think it'd be worth worth looking into it's another aspect to look into on that yeah. you know and something else we totally missed talking about is group boards and stuff can you talk to us a little bit about group boards yeah group boards are a big deal especially if you are if you like you say pinterest isn't totally devoted to the numbers it's more about the the quality content on your site but if, if numbers are a big thing to you group boards are definitely what you want to be involved in because a group board is um a board that uh, every single participant is a member of it 
So they are all putting their content on the team group board. And so if you pin something about your writing about your book on a group board that you belong to, not only are all your followers seeing it, but Ed, all of the members' followers are also seeing what you've posted. And so say you've got 600 followers on your site and Susie over here has 1,000. So that's 1,000 more followers that are seeing your pins because you belong to the same group board. And so a it's group, a, it's so, a good promotional. Yes, it is. And a group board, you have to um, ask permission to join. If it's a pre-existing one that you want, you have to follow the uh, guidelines that they specify when you sign up. Uh, you, they'll have like a little sign up pop up that comes up and you request to join a group board. And you have to agree with everything and put in your request and they will confirm you and you'll be in the, the group. And if you create a group board, then you want to definitely make sure that you make your requirements, uh, your rules very um, obvious, very plain. It's important because, you know, you have your your um, your reputation that you yeah. want to have on Pinterest. You want people to be able to trust you. And, you know, there's some of those group boards. You get on there and you see stuff that you really like and you think it's great. You scroll down a little longer and then you see, oh, wait, I don't want that on my site. <laughs> I don't want people to associate that with me. So you, you want to be sure that there's content that works for you and for your audience. So be selective is kind of what yeah. you're saying on that. So maybe the writer's chat group board, uh, board that you've created, you can make into a group board and invite some of us into that. That would be kind of fun Definitely. On, on that way. And um, just this is not necessarily writers related, but I think uh, most of us here might be interested in this. My daughter just started a group board a private group board and we're, we're starting increasing the prayer ministries at our church and so she invited everybody on the committee to become part of that group and as we find pins related to prayer ministries we're pinning them to that group board so all the ideas are in one place so when we meet next month we have a slew of ideas that we've all researched and there is an excitement growing in the group and i think i think it goes back to its visual again you know and it's it's a search engine idea uh, and uh vicky said she's done that for baby showers we did it for my daughter's daughter-in-law's baby shower last year so baby showers are a great idea on that way it is, oh, wow. yeah um the florida christian writers conference did something really smart with the I've been doing faculty interviews for them. Well, they took all of the images and put them over into a Pinterest board. So now um, it's been very easy then if people have questions about conf the conference or faculty, we can send people directly to Pinterest and they get the, all of the, you know, videos that they can choose from like all in one place. I, I had not even thought of doing something like that with like video content, but it was really smart. You know, that is. It was a great idea. So. Things like that, like podcasts or blogs and that kind yeah. of stuff. Really good idea. Wow. Then, um, I, I have never thought about that. Tina had a question, and I, I think it's a plug-in, but she, she had a question about embedding the, the pin this onto the image. And so um, I think that's that little red button that pops up on top of a, a graphic. Yeah, and uh, we, uh, we mentioned that too. When you set up that business site, it has a part in it, I believe that will show you um, how to um, add a pin it button onto your images on your site. And also you can search it on Pinterest too and type in, you know, how do I install a pin it button on my images? On my and it'll pop up. There is a help section on Pinterest that you can do, go into, isn't there? It's like a tutorial. I go to the help section, section first, but if you, you need more visual stuff, yeah, all those tutorials are out there that will show you how, but I'm pretty sure that the business site walks you through it how to put the pins on your images. And then they have a deal that shows you how to save the pin button onto your computer so that you can pin content that way too. That is great. And you know, something else, and I, I do want to take some time and, and screen share here too, but we haven't talked about Tailwind. I don't know if you did any research on Tailwind. I'm going to throw it. That was a question I, we didn't talk about. Tailwind is a um, thing like Canva would be. What do I want to say? That something you join and you pay, uh, like a uh, uh, board booster or co-schedule, any of those that you join. And I should have looked up before I started talking about Tailwind. But you could pre-schedule your pins to go up on Tailwind, and they also have what they call tribes on Tailwind, which is kind of like groups. 
group boards too. And uh, I have not personally joined Tailwind yet, but for, I think if you're going to be super active on Pinterest, that's something you might want to look into. And I don't think it's super expensive. Like I'm thinking $10 a month or something like that when you pay by the year, but it might be something for you to look into about Tailwind. I don't know if anybody in the chat, maybe when we bring everybody back on, we could ask if anybody has a uh, Tailwind has used Tailwind on that. I know it's something that's kind of my, one of my next steps I want to use it for. A uh, couple questions in the chat. Tina wants to know if she could use her personal, whoops, I just flipped, her, uh, her personal Pinterest as my author Pinterest, or does she have to convert it to a business site? I think that you pretty much ask them to convert it to business sites, don't they, Melissa? Sure. Yeah, I, I used it in my personal one before I knew about business site and, um, it, you know, it kind of works, but it's better if you have the business site and the conversion is real easy. I mean, it's, it's not hard at all. And, and the advantage is you get the statistics and you get some additional help. So it's an easy thing to do, correct? The link it to your site better too. I had to do everything manually before. And if you have the business site, then it walks you through how to, to link everything up to Pinterest. And yeah. I had to link everything through WordPress before I had the business site. You don't so, have to do that now. Yeah, Pinterest makes it easy. Yeah. And like, nothing changes visually. I mean, everything's pretty much the same as it looks. So your site won't change. It won't delete any of your content. It'll all be there when you switch it over to the business site. Right. Let's show a few of them. Uh, did, did, you have, did I miss anything right off, Melissa, before we show a few? Did we cover kind of the basics you wanted to um, do? Think that we got everything I think okay so. see if I can screen share here and see what I come up with now I can't find my ah I had all my stuff hold on I'm gonna I'm gonna go snap hold on I have to reload some of them to get them up I think that's what it is because it's been so this is the Melissa Griffin article you guys see that all right can you guys see the signature? Okay, this is the one, and you scroll down, and she talks you right through using the Yoast plugin to uh, uh, make so you can have rich pins. So, and we put that in the. Um, uh, if you, I think if you just Google Melissa, notice she spells it with a Y. Griffin in rich pins. This would come up too on that. And, and then and let me go here. This is an article by Jane Friedman. We've talked about Jane Friedman in the past. She's got a whole article, and we could put this maybe in our Facebook page later on that, um, but the Beginner's Guide to Pinterest, and it is, especially like if you've not used it very often in the past, this is a really good basic article on that. Oh, so, well, I love going and checking out Jane Friedman. Yeah. Here's an example of, I think your name's Judy, Jody Hudlin. Hudlin, yeah. An example of, she's done a page just on editing. And see all her different pins that she's got on editing. And you know, if you put in how to edit, this is what, look at all the resources you can come up with, visuals, and stuff you can really get inspired this is writer's relief which is a website look at i like this library decors mm -hmm. reading and writing pets gifts for writers see we could have done our research here guys when we did our on, on that before and that let's see who else i got up here Here's Bethany. Yeah, now I'm going to scroll down. Look at the. I'm going to make this smaller. Second, look at all the. How beautifully branded that is, Bethany. Do you want to talk about that for a minute? Yeah, <laughs> like I feel like I want to redo it now. <laughs> Looking at it, um, so I made picture. I made images in Canva, and then I used the Facebook like template for it and I just put an image in there and then the box with the text I just wanted it to look a little cohesive and I haven't done all of them so like if you scroll down you'll see ones that have you know weird things now I've heard tips that your cover should be a photo and not a lot of text 
but I thought this just made it a little easier to see what yeah. you were yeah. looking at. And then it kind of looked a little bit more cohesive. So I was kind of just testing and playing with it. But it wasn't hard to do. The hard part was actually getting the boxes to be the same size. And then um, so you can see some of them are like different shapes as I was messing with it. But um, I don't know, it was kind of fun. It gave it a unique look. I was kind of look, trying to just do something different than everybody else was doing. And not a lot of people had done this. So well, I know cool. when I was snapping through these yesterday, getting this ready so we could at least come to these fairly easy. I, I just about was blown away when I hit your page. So, and if you scroll down, you can see, yes, she's got some other things, but see how good INFJ, that's, I have that one on my mind too. Good, good old INFJs. I like this hilarious. Look, look at this. Look at all what she's got here. There's your Christmas one yep. on, on that and stuff. See, you got some very done good. Here's your Thanksgiving one, isn't it? So there you go. So you can do that, you know, and so I think that's inspirational. And we didn't talk, I didn't know about this part to the other day. This is called, it's, it's like a scroller at the top and you can choose in your settings. Yes, um, and I believe it has an edit option on it too, just like the others, when you go, maybe when you edit your profile. When you, you hit edit, yeah, board. it brings up and you can choose like, I think up to five of your boards. Yeah, you can scroll through. Yeah, it's very, because it's moving, it's a moving image. Mm -hmm. And that draws your attention. Development. They just started doing that, adding more moving images in Pinterest to draw the eye, because it, it can be overwhelming visually, all the things you see. And I think that's why they put it in there, to just kind of kind of catch your attention, right? yeah. pull you in. And, well, when know, I popped up Bethany's and I popped up Johnny's, they had it. And I thought, how come they have it? And I don't. And I had to go in and you'll, you'll see mine in just a minute. I have this now. So I was excited. But notice Bethany's name up here. She's got her brand in here. She's yeah. got her keywords in here. And of course, her link right there. So yeah. there, there, there's some good things. Bethany's a good board to look at, I think, to, for some okay. lessons. <laughs> I'm inspired to like clean it up now. <laughs> There's Johnny's. There's Johnny's. And again, she's got this scrolling that it goes through. Look at all the different inspiration that you can get on this. And then she's done stuff we didn't as much to talk about. It. Look at the clothing that she matched with characters yeah. in her book. She's got Shelby and Danny's and Amy's and Megan's clothing stuff. Can you see how that can inspire you as a, as a uh, writer? Yes, all the things. Uh, on that garden retreats. I think this gives you setting ideas. So there's there's a a lot of neat things that you can do as writers to gather ideas. I don't know. I think I've got a couple more up here. We'll share. Oh, this is uh, Ann Voskamp, who's one of my favorite writers, and you can see that hers isn't as branded as as uh, Bethany's is. But you can see she does a lot of, ins she's an inspirational writer and she does a lot of inspirational sayings on her board, which is what, what I would be something I would Google. Let's see, I got one more. Oh, got mine. And I just recently went back and put keywords in my uh, main title up here. So people, if they would type Google, these are keywords I know people would Google and repeated <laughs> some of those in my description and now I need to go back and put more of these in both my board and my um, pin description and you can see I chose five boards to float through on top that I thought people might be interested in and Melissa mentioned you can move boards and I mentioned I just moved the lent board up you just click on them and physically move them like you like you do anything and so I try to keep my blog one up here. People look for me for spiritual practices and I try to do a seasonal one and try to have one always up there. And since it's my board, I think you could see them. Here are my secret boards. Down at the bottom, you can see what boards I'm doing. Secret boards. I have some fun ideas and I have my Weight Watchers. And, uh, here's my crock pot. You can see the crock pot and places I wanted to go in Scotland, places I went to. So you can see fairy garden. I was collecting some fairy gardens from my backyard there. So anyway, you can keep secret boards down at the bottom. I'm probably making a sick bone through here. Oh, on that. Hey, um, yeah. You mentioned earlier, not, you know, talking about the dynamic images, but we also mentioned having that big 
dynamic font and she does that well on hers too and I think that I like that it works better actually even to alternate it up and on my board I have um, uh, board images that are just just the image a real dynamic you know deep color image that just draws you in and then like the next one over will have just dynamic fonts and words and I think it helps to draw the eye through that's so a good it's point. Just font two, you alternate them, and then it keeps everybody moving through wanting to see what you have. That's yeah, that's a good point. Bethany, somebody asked how you got the emoji on your business name. I used um, I used the phone app so that I could get the emojis in there. So the bow is one of them, and I wish it was a black bow because that's really what my icon is, but the pink one works. So. Um, I have it on my Twitter and my Instagram and my Pinterest next to my name somewhere. So just so that it just kind of, you know, becomes a thing. And then my purse has like a big bow on it. So I will strategically sometimes put that in my Instagram so that it gets on there. And now I'm putting a little black bow on um, the quotes that I do on Instagram too. So right next to Bethany Jet. So it's just like this, like little subconscious thing to where they're, and then I got my bow back here. So <clears throat> just the, the, like, Icons are important, so that's all I, I think so too. It's subtle, it's subtle branding, but it keep, keeps repeating. I, I think it looks really good. Looks really good. We only have we got less than five minutes left. We really <laughs> took up the hour and stuff. Yeah. If you guys want to jump on, and uh, if anybody has an additional question or something they want to share that they have done with Pinterest, and if you can't get back on because we've taken some people as they popped on sometimes we have to unrelease them i think so if you're having trouble getting back on yeah let, let us know in the chat and we can hey, unlock everybody. your video hi everybody it's so good to see everybody and if you want to come back on that you don't have to do the stuff on that but anybody could come on back on to, and, and if anybody has a question or an idea about pinterest that you want to share that you've done before. Melissa, you've done just a great job here today. We just really gave us, we wanted like a overview and that is exactly what we got on this. So anybody got any questions? I have a question. I know Jean, you said that Pinterest is a big driver to your blog for traffic. Is yeah. that the case with anybody else too? I've noticed it. Yeah, it's okay. driven the traffic for me because of the the connection there with Pinterest. Yeah, I think I get more through Pinterest than I do the other ones. Of course, I'm I'm, I'm more devoted to Pinterest than I am to like yes. Twitter and Facebook and those yeah. other ones. It's obviously one of my favorite platforms. So. Well, it That's used I, to be true that I would say younger people went to Instagram, and those of us with a little wisdom went to <laughs> Pinterest. But that's not as true anymore. I think you're seeing people with go, do, using both. Yeah, the podcast. I mean, it's equaling it out a little bit more. Yeah, so yeah, I, I think that's one reason why it shows up on mine a little bit more. They said that um, in the podcast you sent me to, they said there's recently there's been cited over 200 million users on Pinterest. Wow. And I think about half of them are millennials. See? So, yeah, it's, it's growing the younger audience big time yeah so it's really growing so you might rachel you might see that as it, it'd be interesting to look at your stats now and mm -hmm. then if you use it more to see how it goes since i've been more intentional using it on my blog and to draw people my numbers have gone up of course okay. on that anyone else has questions today suggestions fun things to share yeah, I'm, I'm trying to watch the, the chat going through. I realized that earlier I was stuck on private, and Rebecca told me, "Yeah, you got to get it up for everyone." I'm like, ah. <laughs> but now I, I'm just trying to catch up on all the Okay. Comments. It seems like we're slowing up a little bit. You're welcome to stay on for the after party. We just we will. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording here in just a minute. And we just want to thank everybody for being with us today. And thank you if you're watching the replay. Uh, be sure to check out the Facebook uh, page. You know, and uh, Bethany's created a, what, uh, a post over there just for Pinterest so we can mm -hmm. share each other's uh, boards and kind of follow and share some hints. So we can put that over there. And Melissa, thank you. This was a great overview today. And before we stop recording, I do want to say what next week's going to be. Next week, we're going to talk to 
uh, Jameson Ketchner, is that how you Ketchum. Ketchum. And talk about podcasting and interviewing. And so we're looking really forward to that next week. So Tuesday at 11 o'clock Eastern and 10 o'clock Central. We hope you can join us. And what, Bethany? He's amazing. Like, <laughs> he does He does these huge interviews with people. He's a writer. And so he's going to be, like, sharing from a writer's perspective on interviewing. And he and Jill are starting the podcast, which I think released this week or is releasing this week. So, yeah, do not miss next week. Next week. So we're, we hope everybody trying and pass the word. We had over 15 people for a while here live. I was very excited to see that. And I know quite a few watched the replay. So, we're, again, we we're glad we with this. And, again, thank you, Melissa, so much. And for those of you that are here live, uh, why don't you stay on? And for the after party, I'm going to end the video. Bye now. <laughs>